Hi, I'm Lisa Bardot, and today I'll be teaching you how to draw this awesome balloon dog in Procreate. So I will confess that I have a special affinity for balloon dogs. A couple years ago, my husband and I built a six and a half foot tall pinata style blue shiny balloon dog. <laughs> um, we named him Carl after the character from the movie Up, which is one of our favorite movies. And he was used for an event and then he lived in our backyard for a really long time. But we love balloon dogs and they're very special to us. So I'm really excited about this tutorial. We're going to be using brushes from my awesome alcohol markers, a set of 29 brushes made to emulate real alcohol based markers. If you're new to Procreate, I highly recommend watching my Procreate for Beginners tutorial so you can learn all the basics. If you wanna learn more about drawing illustration and working in Procreate, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any future tutorials. Let's get started. So let's begin by creating a new canvas. The canvas size we're going to be using today is 3800 by 2800 pixels. First, we'll make a sketch. Choose a brush to make the sketch. I'm going to use my Bardo pencil from my pencil box set. And for the color, I'm going to choose a nice dark gray. So our balloon dog is going to be made up of a bunch of oval sausage looking shapes. Um, so I'll begin by drawing the body. I'm going to draw a long oval. And then one thing we want to be sure of is that all of the legs and neck and tail all connect to each other where the balloon would twist. So I'm gonna draw two little dots to show where everything is gonna connect. To give myself a guide, I'm going to draw some lines coming out of these dots to represent the legs, the tail, the neck, the head, and the ears. And I'm just gonna move my entire sketch down a little bit so I've got room for everything. For the legs, there will be two overlapping ovals for the front and the back leg, so I'll draw the front leg first, and then I will draw a second oval that's gonna be behind, it's hard to tell in this drawing, but behind, um, and it's gonna be overlapping, so we gotta make sure those are overlapping. And this is just a rough sketch, we're gonna clean it up a little bit before we do our final art. So I'm gonna add in a tail, which is a shorter oval, and then kind of a long skinny piece, this is kind of like the end of the balloon, where it's like not blown up, and I'll draw in an oval for the neck, and for the head, it's a similar oval, but the end is a little flattened because that's where the knot is going to be, like the little tied part of the balloon. And then I'll draw in the ears in a similar way to how I did the legs with two overlapping ovals. And now looking at my balloon dog, I think that the body part is a little bit too long in proportion to the legs. So I'm going to use the select and transform tools to just kind of shrink that a little bit. And the last little detail that I need is the knot on the end of the balloon, you know, like where you blow it up and tie it, which is the dog's nose. So I'm just gonna draw a little circle on the end to represent the knot, and then a trumpet shape for the end of the balloon. All right, so there is our rough sketch for our balloon dog. Now we're gonna take this and make a refined sketch, and then we'll start coloring. So go up to your layers panel, and we're going to tap the little N and then reduce the opacity of that layer, and then create a new layer. So now I'm coming in and redrawing those ovals a little more neatly, and where they overlap, I'm just gonna sketch in very lightly a lighter line so I know what's in front and what's in back. And I'll do that for the hind legs as well. I'll draw in a nice heavy line for what is visible, and for the overlapping parts, like a light sketched in line. All right, drawing in the body. And then the tail. Moving on to the neck. And I wanna make sure that my sketch looks like I want it to in the end because I'm going to be using all of these lines as guides when I draw the final piece with color. All right, the last little detail is the nose, and our refined sketch is complete. So I'm going to turn off the layer that had that first rough sketch, 
And then I'll position this refine sketch to exactly where I want it to be. And then back in my layers panel, I'm going to reduce the opacity of the sketch layer. And I'm going to set the blend mode to multiply. I like to do this because it makes the sketch lines easier to see as I start adding in color. Okay, we're going to go up to the layers menu now and we are going to create a new layer. And then I'm going to move that layer below the sketch layer. Then we're going to go over to our brushes and choose the alcohol marker set. And the brush we're going to be using is called Brush Tip Intense. Let's go over and choose a color now. I want my balloon dog to be a nice cobalt blue, so I'm going to choose that here. But you might notice that when I draw with it, the color is a bit darker and more intense than the color we selected. So with this particular brush, the intense version of my alcohol marker brushes, you have to adjust the color a little bit. You want it to be a little bit lighter and less saturated than the color you want. So that's a great color there. And if you notice, I drew that entire shape without lifting my pencil up. And that's really important. Let me go back. If I draw this shape and then lift my pencil up and come back and draw the rest, you get these like overlapping lines. This brush has a multiply effect built into it, which means that every time you layer on strokes, it gets darker and darker and darker, which is going to be very handy for when we start uh, shading our balloon dog, but not so much for drawing these shapes initially. So just make sure that you don't lift up your pencil when you're drawing these oval shapes. There is a way that we can correct it in case you do get some of those overlap lines, but I'll show you that a little bit later. Okay, so we're gonna do the leg now, but since the leg overlaps, we're actually gonna put it on a different layer. So we're going up to our layers and we're going to tap the plus sign to create a new layer. And then I'm going to do these front leg shapes, the ones that are closer to the viewer. So we'll do the one that's in the front of the dog and then the hind leg as well. And again, be sure not to lift your pencil as you're drawing the shapes. And I want here and here to have an overlapping effect, like a darkening effect where they overlap. So I'm going to set the blend mode of my layer to multiply. And now you'll see that those areas where it overlaps are darker. So I can put other parts of the balloon dog on the same layer as long as they don't overlap. Like here, the, the tail overlaps the leg just a little bit. So um, I can do the neck part since that doesn't overlap um, the legs which are on that same layer. So I'll just go ahead and color that in. And so I can go back to this layer with the balloon body and I can actually put the head on that same layer since they don't touch or overlap. So I'll go ahead and color that in. And I'll also draw in the knot and the little end of the balloon. And I don't mind so much that it, it kind of overlaps there and got a little bit dark. So now let's do these other legs and the tail. We're gonna create another new layer. So we're gonna tap the plus sign, create a layer. We're gonna move it below the other layer because this layer is behind the other, other legs. <laughs> um, and because this other leg layer, like the ones that are closer to the viewer, I, is set to multiply, this darkening effect is already happening, but the body layer is not set to multiply. So I wanna make sure that all of these layers are set to multiply. Otherwise, we won't get that darkening overlap effect. All right, we'll also color in the tail. Again, just using a single stroke to color in that whole shape. And then we can also do one of these ears on that layer as well. So let's do this one that's a little bit more forward. And then for this ear, we're gonna do one more layer. So go ahead and tap the plus sign, and this one's gonna be beneath all the other layers. And then go ahead and color that in as well. All right, great. Okay, so looking back at our layers, let me just go ahead and tap through so you can see kind of where everything is separated out. So now we're going to add some shading to make this have more dimension and also make it look shiny because it's a balloon. And we're going to do this by layering on strokes until we achieve uh, the amount of darkness that we want. So we're going to start with the body. So go ahead and select the layer with the body. So we're using the same brush and we have not changed our color. What we're trying to achieve is that the edges of this shape appear darker and it's lighter in the middle. 
So I'm going to layer another stroke around the edge of this oval shape. So with one continuous stroke, I'm going all the way around and then I can tilt my pencil a little bit and that will soften the stroke. So that's one way to kind of blend that in and then I can kind of darken the very edge. But another way we can blend these strokes together is using the alcohol blender tool. So if you select the smudge tool and then go into the alcohol texture tool set and choose the alcohol blender brush. And then you can use that to kind of blend these colors a little bit. The harder you press, the more it will kind of smooth things out. But I'll go back to my brush tool and choose a color that's a little bit darker. Kind of add an outline around the whole thing. And then I'll use the blender with the smudge tool to kind of blend that and smooth it out, make it a little bit more of a kind of a gradient effect. So I'm gonna be using these two colors back and forth quite a lot. So I'm actually gonna save them in my color palette. Here in my history, I can recall the lighter blue and save it to my color palette. And I can also save the darker blue. So let's go over and do the head now. I'm gonna start with that lighter blue. And again, we're still using the brush tip intense brush. We have not switched brushes. And I'm gonna layer a stroke on to darken it around the edges. And then I can tilt my pencil and kind of blend that in a little bit. So that was all one continuous stroke. And then another stroke to darken it around the edges even more. And then also I'll darken up the knot a little bit. And then I'll take my blender and kind of just blend that a bit. Now I'm gonna grab my darker color and anywhere where the balloon um, twists or like connects with a different part of the balloon, that area is gonna be much darker. So I'm gonna add some darker tones like right there at this connection point. And I'll also add some little dark kind of lines coming from where the balloon gets tied. I'll use my blender to kind of blend those in. And then we will move on to another layer. Let's do the layer with the legs that are closer to us. I'm gonna start with the lighter blue. And just as before, I'm going to be layering on strokes to darken around the edge. Tilt my pencil to kind of soften the inside. Add another layer. I can even just come right in with that darker color and start darkening up that part too. So again, where the balloons connect together, the pieces connect, those are going to be darker. And then I'll get my blender and kind of just soften that all up a little bit. All right, let's go to the other leg, get the lighter blue, darken the edges up. And then come in with that darker blue. And then blend and soften that all. So basically I'm gonna go through to all the other parts of the balloon dog, each of those ovals, and do this exact same technique. You know, and it's okay if you make mistakes or you don't get it like all darkened in one stroke or whatever. These Brushes are a bit forgiving because of the blender tool. You can kind of just like blend things together. And also it's okay if it looks a little messy. Um, I think that's the beauty of these brushes. They're meant to emulate real markers. And when you're drawing with real markers by hand, I think you're gonna get some of those little mistakes and things like that that make it look like it's done by hand. So embrace the imperfections. All right, so we're moving on to the layer with the back legs. So let's go ahead and do that. And I'm just doing that same process where I'm darkening the edges, really darkening the twisted parts, and then blending and softening it a bit. And as I'm going around and doing this, you might be wondering why I'm not using Alpha Lock uh, to add in these darker strokes. And one of the reasons is that these brushes are a little bit transparent, so they aren't completely opaque. So if you wanna go ahead and try it, you can turn on Alpha Lock on one of these 
and um, and try darkening it and you'll see that it won't have that same effect. It won't darken in the same way. And that's because of the way that alpha lock works. So I recommend not using alpha lock when you're trying to layer on strokes to darken like this with these brushes. And the tail is a little bit different. Um, we're gonna do that same effect where the edges are darkened, but the whole like skinny part of the tail is gonna be darker. And that just has to do with the fact that when a balloon is not inflated, it's darker. And then when it's inflated, it's like that transparent kind of the way that balloons look. So anything that is less inflated, <laughs> like the tail, is going to look a bit darker. Same goes for like the nose. And that's why those twisted parts are darker too, because that's where um, the balloon's not stretched out. All right, we're almost done. We just need to finish up by coloring in the ears. So that front ear is on this same layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that one first. Darkening the edges, blending in those strokes with the blender. And one thing I will mention about the blender is it is possible to overblend um, and get everything like super smooth. You might be tempted to do that, but it will kind of take away some of the marker texture, so only use it as much as you need to. You don't need to overwork the blending. And then finally, we'll do this last ear in the back. So just kind of darkening up the edges. Extra darkening down by the twisted part. And then I'll blend that in. All right, so we're making good progress. We've got kind of the dark parts added. Now we need to add um, some lighter parts as well as some highlights. So we're gonna start off by adding some lighter blues to our balloon dog. So we're actually going to create another layer for all the highlights. This layer is gonna be on top of all the other layers. And we're going to select a different brush now. The brush we're going to be using is the Brush Tip True. So I'm gonna choose a nice bright blue to add in the lighter portions of the balloon. This brush does not have a self-darkening effect like the last brush we used. Um, you can layer strokes on top of each other and they won't change color. And I'm just very softly adding in some strokes and you can already see how that's starting to make the balloons look a little bit more realistic. Because we're doing this on another layer, it's giving that nice transparency effect without looking completely transparent. Like the balloon actually looks like you can see the surface of it now versus just being completely see-through because of that multiply effect. And I'm doing kind of the underside of all the shapes. So this would be like the, the right-hand side or like the underside of all of these shapes. And I'm mostly paying attention to the shapes that are in the foreground and I'm not adding these lighter parts to the balloon pieces that are in the back, like the back ear and the two legs that are behind, not the ones that are close to the viewer. So now we're gonna come in with an even lighter color to add the specular highlights, those really bright white highlights. So I'm using almost completely white. So I'm gonna come in and layer on a brighter highlight right in that same um, light blue area. And I'll also add one to the top of that shape. Let's do the tail in the same way. Just very lightly adding on strokes until it gets as bright as you want it to look. And we'll do the legs. Let's do one on the back leg as well. If you're ever not sure about where to put highlights or shadows, look up a reference photo of the thing that you're trying to draw. That's what I did the first time that I went to draw this balloon dog, is I was looking at a reference photo to see where to put all these different highlights and shadows. So don't be afraid to look at references. They're very, very helpful. All right, we've got all our highlights in place. Let's turn off the sketch layer. And our dog is looking great. There's one more thing I wanna do, and that is to use the liquify tool to just kind of like 
squish in these little parts where the balloons tie together on the ends of the legs and the ears because those kind of taper together in the in a real balloon dog. So I'm going to go up to my layers panel and I'm going to select all of the layers that have the balloons and the highlights. Then I'm going to go to the adjustments menu and choose liquify. And I'm going to be using push. And I'm just going to push the ends of the balloons together just a little bit to make them look like they're kind of stretching each other <laughs> to look like they're coming together where they twist together. And I can even um, kind of clean up the tail if I wanted to straighten that out a little bit. I love using liquify to just kind of like fine tune things that I've already drawn. If I don't want to completely redraw something because it wasn't perfect, I'll just use liquify to kind of like fine tune it. Now I'm going to add just a really simple background to this, uh, but I love the texture of the markers. So I'm just going to do kind of like a, a coloring in of the entire background. So I'm going to choose a nice bright light blue. And for the brush, I'm going to go back to the brush tip intense brush. And then I'm going to create a new layer to draw in the background. And all I'm going to do is kind of just loosely color in the area around the dog making sure not to touch the dog itself. I don't know, I just kind of like the way that it looks. You can do the background however you want, but this is how I'm gonna do it. Um, and right now I'm drawing this all with one continuous stroke. I'm not lifting up my pencil, so that's why I like it kind of loose. It makes it a little bit easier. But if you do end up lifting up your pencil, I'll show you how you can fix it. So here I have stopped and lifted up my pencil. Don't worry. Um, I will make sure that my strokes overlap a little bit, but not too much. And then I'll just keep on going. I'll show you how to fix that in just a second. So I lifted up my pencil here again. No big deal. Try as much as you can not to lift up your pencil, but it's okay if you do. Then I'll just keep on going and color in the whole thing. Okay, I've colored in the whole background, but I have these three parts where my strokes overlapped and I've got these little dark areas that I don't want. All you have to do is go in with the alcohol blender and just kind of smudge those areas until they're blended away. So I'll just blend those away. No biggie. Ta-da! <laughs> and I can even use Liquify to kind of clean up any little areas where, you know, it didn't go exactly where I wanted it to go. Just kind of like adjust it and push things around a little bit. I can even go into the hue saturation adjustment and make the background a little lighter if I want. I think that looks pretty good. And there you have it, an awesome balloon dog. I really hope you enjoyed this tutorial. We learned a little bit about how to make things look transparent and also how to make things look shiny. And maybe you'll take what you learned and make some balloon animals of your own. Again, I'm Lisa Bardot and I teach people how to find their creativity through drawing on the iPad. I'm the owner of Bardo Brush, one of the leading brush creators for Procreate. If you'd like to support me, I hope you'll take a look at my premium brush sets that inspire creativity at bardobrush.com. If you're posting artwork to Instagram made with my brushes or tutorials, I would love to see it. The special hashtag just for this tutorial is hashtag BBBalloonDog. You can also use the hashtag BardoBrush. Thanks and happy art making! If you like this video, please subscribe for more awesome tutorials and check out one of my other videos. Have a great day!